my name is Stacy and so flies. Well, for two and a half years, I dated a guy. And for those two and a half years, I thought that he really loved me and that he wanted to be with me, you know, because of who I was and, you know, that we, you know, made each other better and everything. Told this young man, who's my son, <laughs> that, that he was planned as our third child. Probably my biggest lie, the biggest lie of my life, is the lie that I tell myself and have told myself for a long time, which is sort of the, the idea that I don't deserve any of the good things that I have. I was born and raised in a religious cult, so I was lied to my whole life about God, about what's happened in the past, what present life means, what's going to happen in the future, and I believed it all. Hook, line, and sink. My lie that comes to my mind is when I was probably 16, I guess, at the time. I had just scored a job working at a restaurant as a busboy, and it was like a high-class restaurant where I could get a job at. I've always felt that if something good happens to me, it's it's almost hard to enjoy it or celebrate it because there's sort of this deep-seated feeling that um, there's some kind of mistake because I don't deserve good things to happen to me. I watched the movie Big Daddy, not a great movie, but uh, I watched the movie with Adam Sandler and in one of the scenes he was in a supermarket and he was talking to his girlfriend and he said something rude to his girlfriend and the girlfriend walked away and he tried to call her back. He said, wait, and she went like this. And I asked my mom at the moment, I said, what does that mean, mom? And she said, that means goodbye. Um, last month, I crashed our car going to a party, and I never told my parents, I just said someone bumped into me. First off, I should say that that led to um, only an eighth grade education. I quit school after eighth grade. I was in an arranged marriage at 19 years old. I got a call from a friend that I thought had passed away. He like, he like called me. And like this, it's been like a year, and it was like, yeah, no, how you doing? I've been looking for you for like a year, and so working on that, I think intellectually, I know that's not true. I know that I deserve good things. Getting rid of the emotional side of that is a lot tougher. The next day in school, I said goodbye to my friend at an after-school program, and uh, I said I went like that, and you know he got really excited, like a little punk, because he was like, oh, I know what that means. My friend doesn't know what that means. So I'm gonna get him in trouble. And he went to the teacher. He's like, yeah, Luke just said. Like, he just gave me the, the finger, you know, that's what they call it, and uh, I got in a lot of trouble. So I became extremely depressed and was searching for something to make me happy and searching in all the wrong directions. Um, you know, alcohol, I had an affair, I just made a mess of my life to the point of trying to kill myself. My parents went away for a weekend and I wanted to have the weekend in for myself and I didn't want to work. So I called up and told them that I uh, broke my arm. I couldn't work, and then actually they called me back and were going to give me a promotion where I wouldn't need to use my arm, but then at that point I couldn't take it because my arm wasn't broken. As much as I tell everybody else that they're worth everything and that they're worthy of love and affection and all the good things in the world, that I'm I'm worthy of that stuff too. And, uh, like, you know, finding out that that wasn't the case after two and a half years, wasting my time, you know, and my heart on someone and then you know just kind of realizing that I shouldn't waste any more time on him and on him you know realizing I know what I deserve. Went through all kinds of trials with this cult trying to get out of it. Very very difficult to get out when you spend your whole life. My entire family was in the cult. Everyone I ever knew was in the cult because we weren't allowed to associate with anyone outside of it. So when I went to leave and try to break free of all these lies, when I finally realized, oh yeah, it is a bunch of BS, and I wanted to find the truth about God and life outside of the cult, very difficult because I had no support network and no education and no career. And it just shows that when your parents try to protect you at the expense of veracity, at the expense of truth, it can be very detrimental. I do it all over again. So I learned the hard way that, you know, you're better off just telling the truth. If I wanted the weekend off, I should have just asked for the weekend off. Maybe I could have ended up with that promotion. <laughs> but live and learn. But as scary as it was, it was also extremely exciting because the whole world was this great brand new place that I didn't know. And I got to explore it for the first time. And so since then, it has been one big adventure and it's been really scary at times. Um, because when I believed those lies, I was so certain about them, I didn't question anything. And out in the real world, you have to question stuff. And you have to be okay with uncertainty sometimes. And so that's what I learned. Question, develop your critical thinking skills, and you get through it, and everything will be good. Oh, 
as much as I tell everyone else, and I do try to tell everyone else that they are worthy, um, because I believe that completely, that we are all worthy, and I just have to keep reminding myself that I am part of that too, um, and that I am included in that group of people who are worthy, and um, maybe someday it'll be easier. Just to move on and be happy and to love myself uh, before I go 